Welcome back to the Daily Dose of Germ. My name is Jeremy, and as John Maxwell would say, I am your friend. Um, today was an awesome day. We just got done with the gym. It's 2.46. You know how I like those nighttime routines. It's just kind of the way I operate. I would go to Winco, play hide-and-go-seek. I don't know if you follow my Snapchat. It's B-U-R-R-L-E-F-T, Burleft. There's some crazy stuff that goes on down there. Most of it is... Top golf oriented. I work with a crazy bunch of crew, and I found my manager in Winco today, and he was diving across the aisles like a ninja. Pretty awesome. So that's what happens when you work with cool people. You have pretty cool days, and you learn from them too. But today's a pretty cool episode because I wanted to go over an email that I got from a viewer. And if you have an email that you want to ask me about a topic that I can go over, you can send it. I'll have my email in the description. But it is jburright at ghostreaking.pro. And the, the phrase is to come streak with me. You can take that for whatever you want to. But anyways, today's question was pretty cool because it said, don't you ever get tired of reading? And that's an interesting question, especially in today's generation. I feel like most people haven't picked up a book. If you ask someone, hey, man, you know, what, what have you read lately? They'll be like, oh, dude, I haven't picked up a book since I was like seven. And it's true. I mean, I don't know about you, but Spark Notes, Spark Notes is the easiest way to get through our literature classes. You know, the teacher goes up in the front, hands out the test. I think we got all the answers that we needed. We get the gist. It's just not necessary. And, you know, I don't know about you, but Catcher in the Rye and what are, the, what are some of the other ones? Moby Dick. I don't know. Do we read Moby Dick anymore? Yeah, I don't know. It's, case in point. I don't, even, I don't even remember the books that we were supposed to read in our literature classes. So you literature teachers out there, it's not that we don't, it's not that I don't respect your job. It's just that I didn't necessarily, hmm, I don't want to say that. It's not that I didn't care. Huh. I, I, I didn't learn a whole lot. I think I read the Charles Hemingway book, The Rising Sun or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, we're getting off topic. But, you know, people just don't read these days. And I had sent him a couple books that he should read. And he's like, I feel like a lot of these guys kind of say a similar thing about success. You know, they talk about, you know, making connections, having a ton of energy, um, seeing the patterns. And I see that as a positive. I don't see that. I don't see that as a negative. When I start seeing people that are saying the same thing, Cross genres, I see that as something you should jump on. It's something you should really try to take advantage of. You know, if they're all talking about having a ton of energy, if they're all talking about, you know, finding your niche, being yourself, talking about making good connections, you know, obviously working your butt off, you have to work hard. You can't be afraid of that. But, you know, if they're going to talk about the same things, I feel like we should take notice of that. And a case and example is recently um, I've been looking more into the just the stock market and how it works. I'm curious. And, you know, most of them say that you're kind of looking for those mini crashes to happen. Um, it's not good for a lot of people. There's a lot of people who have a ton of money at stake. But when they do happen, if you can kind of get in, you know, pennies on the dollar, and then eventually things are probably going to round back out. It, it's happened every single time even in the biggest recessions it's eventually rounded back out and those people that stuck with it at the bottom or got in at the bottom it's i mean it sounds like common sense when i heard it i was like well it kind of just makes sense get in when it's low sell when it's high and it sounded easy but they're all saying the same thing so i'm going to at least engage in looking into the opportunity at some point you know i don't have a whole lot of money on the side and i don't know who does but that doesn't mean that you can't at least see the patterns. Um, even recently with the geopolitical concerns overseas, that's the little little script, little message I got today. It was like geopolitical concerns um, seem a little more at ease. Stocks went up like 100 points. And I was like, oh, well, round it back out. Um, case in point. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of things about learning where you read every day and it just kind of sinks in a little bit more. I call it like a, it's like a total immersion. You know, you you only pick up about 10% of what you learn the first time you read something anyways. So the second time you read it through, you'll notice something you haven't seen before. Or when you watch a movie for the second time, you're, you're laughing at parts. You're like, I don't even remember that part. I, I didn't pick that up. 
Um, you just don't pick up a whole lot when you read. So when you read it through a second time, yes, you'll see the same same little bit, and you'll that, but that 10% is going to be locked away in the long-term memory, and then here comes more. So it becomes habitual for you. And so a, a book like you know How to Win Friends and Influence People, those kind of books you can have you can have just natural reactions now as you've grown because and I, and I don't think it's that's the other thing is I feel like we don't imp, we don't study human relationships enough the five love languages and how to win friends and influence people have changed my life more than any other book ever has and it's changed my life because it's changed the way I interact with people I never realized that I was kind of a selfish asshole before I was and it wasn't because I wasn't a good person. It was because I focused on my own shit. I went to work out and then I played basketball and then I went home and I cooked food and I told stories about how cool my life was to people. You know, if people asked a question, I was like, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, I'm freaking cool. Like I'm working on stuff. I'm, I'm trying to play professional basketball. And then they start talking about their school and I'd be like, yeah, well, and I'd listen a little bit, but I really didn't have follow up questions. I wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Like what, what made you get into that? What influenced you? Who do you look up to? Like, who would you trade places with? I had no questions for people because I didn't, I didn't care about their lives enough. And I didn't realize that, you know, that's why my tips, you know, weren't that good. And I just sewed into some authors that are, you know, some of the best authors in the world and how to win friends and influence people and the five love languages and, you know, Tony Robbins books. And, you know, there's, there's plenty I can't really think of off on the top of my head right now, but I sew it into those and it completely changed my relationships. I wanted to, you know, I said in another video, I wanted to ask more questions than I received. And if someone asked me a question, a lot of times I'll just ask back with another question. You'll be like, you know, how's your day going? I'll be like, huh, what do you want to know about it? It just gets them thinking. You know, we, we have so many standard conversations and it produces standard results. And how are you going to think outside the box to ask them a good question? I asked my, um, I got my hair cut a couple weeks ago and one of my, one of my best friends was going right after me to get his hair cut and he was laughing because she was like, yeah, he asked me a question and I didn't know the answer to it and I feel like I should. And all I asked was, I said, what are you, what are you trying to accomplish in the next couple weeks? She's like, um, uh, well, I have school and something. I was like, no, no, no. Like, what are you trying to accomplish outside of work, outside of school? What would you like to have accomplished? Whatever it might be. And she didn't really have an answer for me because people don't ask those kind of questions. And so you make people think and you challenge them. And it just, it, it just gives this different relationship. It has a truthful, real feel to it. And the other thing is just, you know, when you're vulnerable about it, I love asking questions. And one of the biggest questions I've been asking now lately is what can I do better? What, what do you see that's a character flaw in me? And it's a story I told today. You know, one of the things John Maxwell t well, told in that leadership conference I went to is he told his partners, he said, I want you to think about it for a few days and come up with like two or three things that I'm just not very good at, I'm not strong at, and come back and tell me so I can work on it because that's that's something I want to do. And his like eight partners are in the room like, oh, what is he bad at? You know, oh, he's really, really not very good at this. You know, no, 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 he's worse at this. And, like, and then the girl pops up and she's like, but you know, he's never ever really talked about this. And pretty soon they're arguing about all the things he's bad about. And he's like, I'm right here. I'm still here. Hello, still here. And there was like 30, you know, and he, he saw him start writing them down. And he's like, how many is there? He didn't realize that it's hard for us to see all of our flaws. And so that's another question I've, I've enjoyed asking. You know, I ask, you know, close friends and people that I trust, people that spend a lot of time around me. But I feel like the, just when we sow into these books and we sow into these leaders, I can't ever get bored of it. I, I can't get bored with learning when I get to turn around and use it in my day-to-day -day life. You know, it's like sports where you go and study footwork and then you immediately get to try and apply it the next day. Probably shouldn't apply it in a game, probably shouldn't apply it in practice first, but you immediately get to apply it. So it's kind of like preparing for life a little bit differently instead of spending that time, you know, watching Netflix or going out with your friends, maybe we can prepare for life. So no, I don't get bored. I don't get bored reading at all. I think it's a ton of fun. I do mix it up because I am in my car a lot, so I do audios. Um, 
I do audios, reading, um, and then just challenging myself. You know, when I go on like night walks, I'm gonna do stuff that's kind of outside the box. I ask myself questions and try to write things down and see if I can get some insightful responses, you know, from me. So um, no, I don't. I don't really. I don't really get bored with reading. If you'd like to ask me a question, if there's a topic you'd like me to cover in the future, feel free to send me an email. Like I said, I'll leave my email in the description below. Um, this is a ton of fun. This is my chance to show you guys kind of a journey that I'm on um, and to try and give back and to try and, you know, bring you guys along with me. You know, this train, I, I got this train moving pretty good and I want to I want to keep it moving. And if you want to hop on and try to change your life a little bit and, and get going, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I'm just going to say what's kind of gotten me started and in the right direction. So this has been your Daily Dose of Germ. I definitely need to go get cleaned up and you guys have an awesome night.